Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. So pretty recently, due to all of the COVID stuff going on, um, I decided to try and wipe out some of the Wi-Fi dead spots in the house, as there's lots of brick walls around me, including right back over there, which you might be able to see in the conservatory. Um, and basically we wanted to try and sort some of those black spots out. We contacted Virgin Media, they sent us some booster boxes, which um, didn't really help at all with the wireless signal. In fact, in some rooms it actually made it worse. And, um, I went out and bought a TP-Link router to use as an access point. So in today's video, I'm gonna show you how you can do the same thing to extend the wireless network and improve the speeds in your house. Let's go. Okay, so these are the uh, the boosters, the Wi-Fi booster kits that Virgin Media sent out. Um, so there's basically a sender and a receiver box. Um, these are actually power line kits, which they didn't make very clear. Um, so as before we sent them, we thought they just used wireless technology. So we actually tried them in here, connected to the routers there, as you can see. Um, we plugged them in. We plugged one up at the other end of the kitchen, which is only even here. And the results were pretty shocking, to be honest. So the router we're going to be using to extend the Virgin Hub network and um, improve the signal is the TP-Link AC1750C7. This has got raving reviews online and um, is widely available. We, I mean, we bought this one from Argos, I needed it quickly, but they are available for cheaper on um, sites like eBay and things like that. Great routers, good for the sort of mid-range um, budget option. Now, just before we go any further in the video, you are going to need an ethernet cable in the point of the house that you wish to extend the wireless network to. So our ethernet cable plugs into the Virgin Hub router, it goes all the way around the house and it ends up somewhere in here. There it is, the new router. So you are going to need an ethernet cable to the point where you wanna basically put your new router. That is the most important part of this video. So if you're looking for a very quick, easy option that doesn't require running ethernet cables, then you may as well turn off now. Okay, now the first thing we need to do is we need to split the networks up on the Virgin Hub router. We need to basically differentiate the 2G network and the 5G network. Um, so we do this by entering the Virgin Media setup page. Um, this should be labeled on the bottom of the Virgin Super Hub, um, but it's normally 192.168.0.1. So you go into your browser. Now you need to be connected to the Virgin Hub either wirelessly or with an ethernet cable at this point. So obviously you need to be able to talk to the hub on the network that the hub's on. So, and uh, in terms of password, now if you've never done this before, uh, the password will be on the bottom of the Virgin Hub router. Um, if you change the password yourself before, um, just put that in. I'm gonna put this in now and then skip to the next bit um, just so I don't show everyone the password. Okay, so once you're into the setup screen, the first thing we're going to need to do is go into advanced settings and then wireless first of all, and then wireless signal. So advanced settings, wireless, wireless signal, and the first thing we're going to do is go down to the bottom, see where it says smart Wi-Fi and simply click disable channel optimization. Apply those changes, this may take a second, so we're just going to wait for this to complete. And there we go, your settings have been updated. So once we've disabled channel optimization, we need to come back into the router settings again, uh, this time in the security tab on the left hand side of advanced settings. And uh, in this page, we need to differentiate the 2.4 gigahertz network and the 5 gigahertz network. Uh, now I've altered this um, a little bit just so I can demonstrate uh, what we need to do. Now, Depending how much you know about networks, you can either leave the Wi-Fi network name the same as what it was before, um, or you can do what we've done, uh, we sort of made our own little network name. Um, now, if you want to keep it the same, obviously you'll have something like a VM um, and then a load of numbers like 807640, you can leave that. Uh, but basically what we need to do, um, you can change it, you can keep it the same, it's totally up to you because you're going to need to reconnect your all your devices anyway. Um, so Wi-Fi network name uh, on the 2.4 gigahertz network, we're just going to literally add um, 2G uh, to the name of that network. And then for the 5 gigahertz network, we're going to add dash 5G. Uh, this is just so we know um, which network is which. 
and then in terms of the passwords we want to keep um, passwords the same really now if you've already got a password in there you can actually keep the passwords the same um, if it's a password you know Virgin Media gave you and it's the same one that's on the card then that's fine or you can um, make your own password it's totally up to you but try and keep them the same for the 2 gigahertz and the 5 gigahertz network as if this will just make things a little bit easier and once you've done that go down to the bottom apply changes and uh, we go from there okay now once you've got your virgin hub um, settings all saved um, you're going to want to get your tp link router um, you want to plug it into the wall use the ethernet cable supplied in the box and uh, simply connect it to one of the ethernet ports on the back of the router straight into your laptop or pc uh, now it's important that you use one of the orange ethernet ports and not the blue internet port otherwise it simply won't talk to the laptop. Now once you've got your TP-Link router connected uh, to your laptop the access page for a TP-Link router or for most TP-Link routers is tplinkwifi.net uh, um, it should tell you either on the box of the router if it's different, but most of them it is the same. Now, I've, as you can see, I've disconnected wirelessly from the Virgin Media um, router just so we don't have any issues while setting this up. Um, so let's see what happens. So this is um, going to be the first page by the looks of it. So it's asking us to create a password first of all. Um, so I'm just going to put uh, my password in there now. So let's make a little password. Oops, sorry, bear me one second. Okay, so we've chosen a password. Let's get, let's get started. Managed to match them both up, which is always good. Now, what we're going to do is once the TP link page is uh, loaded, we're going to totally ignore the quick setup page. So, totally ignore this. We're going to go straight to the advanced tab. We're going to go into operation mode and we're going to change it to access point mode. Um, so it should be in router current mode, access point. Now TP-Link make this process very easy for everybody. Um, so access point, click save and it will take a minute or two to reboot. So we're just going to let it do that now. It does seem to boot straight onto the same screen that you were on, so it sort of automatically reboots. So it asks you to put the password in again, so we're going to do that very quickly, like so. Basically, what we need to do with the TP-Link router now is we need to make the settings the same as the Virgin Media um, settings for the 2G and the 5G network. Now, I did have this when I was testing this out earlier on, that it doesn't actually sometimes take you onto this page in quick setup. So you can access this in the settings tab and the wireless settings on the left hand side. But as long as you're on a page where you can access the name and password of the 2.4 gigahertz network and the 5 gigahertz network, you'll be absolutely fine. What you need to basically do is you need to replace the network name for the 2 gigahertz network with the same network name and password as the 2 gigahertz um, on the Virgin Media Hub. So whatever that was earlier on, you need to replace it and make sure both are the same. So for instance, our 2G network is felnet-2G and then enter the password in for whatever uh, the password was. I'm not going to do that on camera again, obviously. And then same for the 5 gigahertz network. So enter both of those in. I'm going to do that now. We'll hit next and then we'll see what happens. Okay, so as you can see now, we've pressed save and we're just going to literally let um, the router save the settings, basically. We'll blank out the passwords to make this a bit easier for everybody to see. Okay, so as you can see, it's managed to change all of the router settings. So we're now going to go and put this router back in the room where it needs to go. And um, basically, we're going to show you what happens with the network names um, once everything's in place. So here we go, the TP-Link router is now plugged in to the place where it needs to be. Apart from this time we run the Ethernet cable into the internet socket rather than the LAN ports. Now if we've named both networks correctly and the two routers don't differentiate to each other, 
then you should only have one set of networks on your phone or your device. We've got a Felnet 2G and a Felnet 5G. We've not got different names of networks for the TP-Link and Virgin Hub. The reason we've done this is everything will sync together and your phone and device will connect to which router it sees giving the strongest signal. So we're connected to the 5G network. We're next to the Virgin Super Hub 3 now, and we're gonna show you how bad the Virgin Hub is. Bearing in mind, we're on a 350 meg connection here. Okay, it's 23336. So it's not terrible. Okay, so we're gonna walk into the other part of the house now. Now this is obviously where the dead spots start happening. So we've got over here and in here, really bad in here because of the brick walls. So now what you'll see is, you probably won't quite believe this. Now you see, I've not actually touched the phone. The phone will automatically connect to this router. We've not done anything. The network name is the same. It's basically switching between routers as we walk around the house, whichever's got the strongest signal. So let's hit go and let's see what happens this time. Yeah, that's actually pretty good. So 380 download and 36 upload. We contacted Virgin Media about this speed issue a few uh, weeks ago because we didn't think that it was right that we bought a third party router that was transmitting, you know, the speed guaranteed by Virgin, but yet the Virgin hub could only do 220. I mean, we thought there was a problem with the router, we contacted Virgin Media, they basically, the guy didn't admit to it, but they're sort of on the sly admitting that the, the Super Hub 3s are not capable of transmitting the 350 meg connections that people are paying for. Um, his suggestion was to basically put the router that we bought in as the main router, replace the Virgin router and put the Virgin router in modem mode. But then obviously we lose half of the wireless signal again, even though this is more powerful, we're still not gonna get the speeds, you know, as, as great as having two routers. This is why we didn't do this as a modem video. So the reason we split the 2G and the 5G networks up was because we found that the phones when sitting in the conservatory were seeing the 2G connection from the Virgin hub more powerful than the 5G connection from the TP-Link hub. Because 2G is a stronger signal, it can go further basically. So by splitting the 2G and the 5G networks up, we could force the phones, although the signal might not technically be as good, we can force the devices to connect to the faster network for much faster results, basically. So we're gonna do a little speed test, the final ones to finish off the video. We've got the TP-Link router on in here. As you can see, we've got two out of three Wi-Fi bars. So let's see what happens. You've never actually tried it with the sofa this way. Let's see what speeds we get in here. So we're getting 187 download and yeah i mean it's more or less the same upload as well so what we're going to do now is we're going to go and turn the tp link router off and then see what happens to the connection basically so you can see me do this now we're going to turn the tp link router off we're going to go back in here i'm just going to shut this door and we're going to run the same test again so the network is still active but it will automatically switch over to the Virgin router, although we're on the same network, it'll be on the Virgin router this time. So let's see what we get in here. So make sure we've got this in focus. Here we go. So this is the problem with the power of the Virgin hub. So we're still on the 5G network. I'll prove that in a minute, but we've only got 33 downloads. So as you can see, there's a big speed difference. I mean, the upload always stays about the same 35. I'm just gonna prove that we're not got two different networks. Here we go. We've still only got the 5G network there and we're not even connected to the 2G. So there you go, the end of the video for under a hundred pounds, a hundred dollars, we managed to get a TP-Link router an Ethernet, a Cat6 Ethernet cable, which is 50 meters, which runs all the way around the house and basically um, extends all of the dead spots and uh, basically give us the speeds that we're actually paying for from Virgin Media. To be honest, the Virgin Media hub is okay for the, the main part of the house. I mean, obviously we're not getting the full speeds, 
but it does manage in the main part of the house okay. Um, it's in the sort of extension area where things have been improved quite dramatically and um, obviously in the office we've got you know nearly a 400 meg connection which is great as well. So once again I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you'd like any advice please comment down below. I do my best to help you out and um, stay tuned to the channel because we're going to be doing more videos like this very soon. Stay safe.